So let's cover this week's headlines. So this is from CNN. We had 13 service members killed in Kabul in suicide attacks. After having pulled out most of our military, given ourselves a bad strategic position as well as a terrible tactical position, and then leaning on the Taliban to provide security, wow, it was very surprising to the Pentagon that we actually lost people in a suicide attack. Just unforeseeable that that kind of thing could happen in the situation that we created. This is from CNN. A lot of people are upset because we left a lot of military equipment behind. But the Pentagon has assured us that they made the equipment inoperable uh, and unusable. So here is some video of the Taliban driving some armored SUVs. As you can see, they are not operable and not usable. How about a Black Hawk helicopter? Here's a video of the Taliban flying around a Black Hawk helicopter that is inoperable and not usable. This is from the Washington Post. Apparently some people were saying that uh, we left $83 billion worth of weapons to the Taliban. And luckily for us, the Washington Post did a fact check. And they said this really wasn't true. Just a bunch of right-wing conservative crazy people who said $83 billion. It was only $65 billion. And the reason why that matters is because you should only be pissed off if it's over $80 billion. So if it's under $80 billion, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So thanks to the Washington Post for this fact check. It wasn't $83 billion. It's only $65 billion. See? That's different. That's different. We're not mad now. Thank you, Washington Post. This story is from the Washington Post. So there was a Royal Marine who was working with a group uh, who had some dogs. He was trying to get them out of Afghanistan. Uh, I guess he tweeted the Taliban and worked, and he was able to get a privately chartered plane to take his dogs out. They flew into the Heathrow Airport in London. Uh, so he got his dogs out, but he did not get his staff out. I believe his staff is still there. So, um, I mean, I was just wondering if you think any Taliban are upset about it, and if anybody's asking their commander, hey, who let the dogs out? Because of the song, you know, who let the dogs out? This is being reported by the Washington Post CIA director William Burns met with the Taliban in Kabul. So apparently we're also giving intelligence directly from the CIA to the Taliban. Because they won't use that against us. Uh, that couldn't possibly happen, um, right? It wouldn't let them know where our assets are, if any. Um, how we got the information. They couldn't deduce any of that from us giving them intelligence. Uh, could it? Some of you may be thinking, hey, I didn't think the United States negotiated with terrorists. We don't. Like, negotiating implies that there are two parties bartering over some item to exchange. Now, if you don't really barter and you're, and you're just like giving it to someone, that's not really negotiating. So we're not really negotiating with terrorists. We're just giving them stuff. So like here's a quiz that I think might be helpful for you to understand our relationship with, with how we deal with terrorists, okay? Um, the United States does not negotiate with terrorists, but it will, A, give them a country, B, Give them a list of people that betrayed the terrorist organization. C, give them billions of dollars in weapons. D, provide intelligence directly from the CIA. Or E, all of the above. Okay, do you have the answer? Actually, any of those are right. Now, this next story comes from Jonathan Turley, his race Ipsa Locator blog. And apparently there was a council in Australia. The, uh, in Australia, it's the Berkshire Council in the northwestern part of the state of New South Wales. Um, they were concerned over people spreading COVID when they were visiting this dog shelter. Uh, so they apparently they had a number of different things they considered solutions they considered that might help solve this problem. And well, ultimately they decided the best solution would be to just kill all the dogs in the dog shelter. As long as you're not going too far, Australia. Hurricane Ida is causing all sorts of damage. First went through Louisiana, causing tons of damage, wreaking havoc. It's now going up through the mid-Atlantic and Northeast. I felt a little bit like a weatherman right there. You know, I'm not a weatherman. But anyway, causing a lot of damage. 
Uh, and thinking about this, I thought with everything going on, maybe we could catch a break, but uh, I'd have been wrong. A little wordplay on the Ida. Mm. This is from the National Review. A school district in Indiana is segregating based on uh, race and ethnicity. So they have these teacher groups, these affinity groups, and they're based on race and ethnicity. And I believe they have 12 different groups. Haven't we tried segregation before and it wasn't great? Uh, it wasn't really preferred. But I don't know, that's the great thing about the United States. Like, we're always trying to make a better mousetrap. So, as long as we figure out how to segregate better, I'm sure it'll be good for everyone. This is coming out of Fox News. So, the city of San Francisco is starting a pilot program where they are going to pay high risk individuals to not shoot people. Um, just a couple of thoughts. If you have to pay someone to not shoot someone else, maybe they should not be out of prison or jail yet. And uh, could you start another pilot program in San Francisco where you pay people to not take a dump on the sidewalk? Like the last time I was in San Francisco, that happened to me. And it's still horrified. I've still not been back to the city since. But yeah, this guy just dropped his pants and took a dump right in front of me on the sidewalk. So I... Could you do that pilot program soon? So the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, they have just come out with these new guidelines for using terminology that is more inclusive and less offensive. I thought it might be helpful to just look at a few examples. Uh, so for example, you shouldn't say that someone is disabled. You should refer to them as people with a disability. You see that there's a pretty big difference there. Uh, also, you shouldn't refer to people as smokers. You should say they are people who smoke. So apparently, you just take whatever it is, and instead of saying that, you say people with that, and it's kind of... That's huge. I mean, the, it, that probably only costs us, what, $50 million? It's nice to see our tax dollars hard at work. Um, and the CDC, don't you guys have other things to worry about? Do you have anything else going on right now that might be wanting to take up all of your time and not this kind of stuff? Are you sure there's not something else? All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.